One of my favorite parts of the new Escalade, the screen startup sequence. That's a nice touch on these massive curved OLED screens. So we spent a good amount of quality time in the newest generation of the Cadillac Escalade, but the one we have this week has one difference. Finally, I get to spend a whole week living with an Escalade that has Super Cruise. Super Cruise is GM's autonomous driver assistant system. We're on the freeway. It is true hands-free. I have experienced it briefly with the new GMC Hummer EV, but now with the Escalade, we've got one. I am super excited to see what it's like in the real world. You can tell it has Super Cruise by the steering wheel. We've got this display here that lights up blue or green or red. And also there's a little sensor right there. Let's go ahead and start her up. Cycling through the colors, that's all of them. When it's functional and on, it is green status light. It's a wet day today, but we get to drive the Escalade. Lights turn on to welcome your approach. So this is an Escalade Platinum, which obviously means it's going to be quite expensive. As option, MSRP is $113,815. And with today's current state of the market, these command significant markups too. So yeah, it's not cheap, but it's an Escalade Platinum. They're super, super, super nice. So here's the window sticker, 2022 Escalade Sport Platinum. The exterior color is called Galactic Gray Metallic, but to me it looks more like a really dark blue black kind of finish. Interior is jet black, 6.2 V8, 10 speed auto. It's a platinum, so it's got a ton of standard features. The OLED screens, 36 speaker AKG sound system, which is one of my favorites, heads up display. Like it has pretty much everything you would want. But the big point of this test here is Super Cruise, $2,500, 2000 for night vision. The side steps, a couple other things. Chip shortage means no electronic steering column lock. Interesting. But anyways, just under $114,000, 105 standard price without options. But Super Cruise, that's what I'm really excited to try out. Also, don't buy the gas V8 one for fuel economy because 14, 16 combined, 19 highway is not brilliant, but this thing is also the size of a small house. The diesel is much better. I really like the diesel on this actually. Outside of Tesla's full self-driving autopilot, whatever they call their system, GM's Super Cruise is likely the best autonomous or semi-autonomous driver assistant hands-free system out there. Tried it out like I mentioned, but I really wanted to spend a whole week living with it and just seeing how it behaved in the real world, which roads were mapped, uh, how good it was. I already got to experience the autopilot system deciding to pass somebody on its own. Like I was sitting there hands free and it signaled lane change, passed somebody and then signaled back and went back into the lane. I was like, whoa, it takes a little bit of trust. It takes a little bit of time. You get used to it. And now I was, I was hovering over the steering wheel for the first like five, 10 minutes of driving. Uh, so we're going to try that out. Super Cruise was like late availability for the Escalade. So the Escalade launched, got the drive two or three of these and none of them had Super Cruise. So I was waiting to get one that had it. I'm assuming chip shortage and technology implementation and supply chain and who knows what else caused it because it's a really cool system, but seems to be becoming more common on uh, the Chevy Bolt. You can get it, obviously the Hummer EV Escalade and I'm sure more and more will continue to add Super Cruise. All right, we are on the freeway now and this road should be supported. So we've got cruise control on and we press this button and Super Cruise goes, the light turns green on the steering wheel. We've got the green icon there and also on the heads up display, auto lane change is happening. It's looking for an opening and there it goes, made the lane change and it does not like it if the camera blocks that sensor. So I got to put it here. <laughs> I'm gonna hold the camera out there because it doesn't like it when I have the camera in front of my face. You have to pay attention with Super Cruise running. It is hands-free on the freeway, but they're monitoring what you're doing. There's a time window. I tested it when I was in the Hummer. You could look away for like almost 10 seconds before it starts beeping, warning you, but then when it gets really angry, the light turns red and it will fully disengage and disable Super Cruise to the point where you have to stop, key cycle, and then it starts back up again. So we're currently on a mapped road and Super Cruise has lane, steering, everything, speed, proximity. It just did a lane change. It is handling all of it on its own. I'm not touching the pedals. I'm not touching the steering wheel. This is pretty cool. Watch this entire sequence. It's currently doing an auto lane change because it detected slower cars in front. 
and as we approach this curve, it's doing a very good job following the curve. We aren't like ping-ponging off the sides of the lane. This is like nice and centered. Auto lane change back. We passed the two cars. So now we're lane changing back into the right lane. Again, I haven't done anything. I haven't signaled. I haven't made any steering inputs. I haven't touched the gas pedal or anything. It's just handling it. And we're just cruising along with Super Cruise. It rained really hard last night, which means the Escalade got an unintended sort of car wash, I guess. It's not super clean right now, but we can do a quick exterior walk around. It's got the blacked out front grille. Actually, I think all the trim is blacked out. You see this paint? This doesn't look like gray to me, per se. This looks like a, a very, very dark blue, almost black. It's got a little bit of gray hint to it, a little bit of blue to it also. This is the standard length. There is the ESV available for the Escalade. There's also going to be a V version coming, which hopefully I should be driving soon, which I'm excited about. The Giant Blade updated taillights, a Cadillac badge the size of like my entire hand. Massive. And they're badging them as 600 now, which represents the torque figure, I believe, a newton meter. So this and the diesel Duramax both make that 600, which is preparing for probably a hybridized electric version in the future. We've got the augmented reality dash option pulled up. It's got a live camera feed. If you have directions running, it would actually project them onto the live video feed. But note the lane keep assist and the cruise control option there. It's green, but it doesn't have the super cruise option. Once we get onto the freeway, this should show if Super Cruise is available on a map supported road and then we can start Super Cruise, which we're gonna do another test of today because we're taking a quick trip to go visit Alex from Legit Streetcars. So now that we're on a divided highway, you'll see the little steering wheel icon that just showed up on the right side. We press the Super Cruise button, steering wheel turn green, and now we're good to go. Super Cruise is running hands free. Watch Super Cruise handle this curve. It's doing a very good job of keeping the vehicle centered in the lane. It's not like we're bouncing towards the outer left edge and it's taking the curve perfectly fine. Exactly the same as if I was driving. So I have the camera here behind my head because if I put it in front of my face, it gets unhappy because it thinks I'm distracted, which is good. It's monitoring you and making sure that you as a driver are still paying attention. Oh, here comes some of the rain. So let's get some rain tonight. I actually kind of hope it starts raining pretty hard because I want to see how a system like this handles inclement weather when the sensors and the cameras aren't able to function at optimal uh, like visibility and things like that and if the markers on the road are obscured by just like really hard falling rain I have a feeling it'll probably make me take over that's always some of the challenges with these new semi-autonomous driver assistance features. I remember having a BMW 7 Series for a week and the front sensor got covered by snow and ice in the middle of winter and it was like, hey, take over. I can't do anything anymore because the front sensor was caked in snow, ice, and salt. So that's something I'll have to figure out. Having now experienced Super Cruise for a bit longer, I'm pretty convinced this is outside of Tesla's system the best out there. I haven't tried Blue Cruise yet, which some people were talking about, with that's Ford's system, so I definitely want to experience that, but Super Cruise on a freeway that's mapped is pretty impressive. You can also now tow with Super Cruise. I was supposed to go on the GMC Sierra drive, but unfortunately I got sick, so I missed that one, but there was gonna be a demonstration of Super Cruise towing, which is even more impressive. And then GM's next step is supposed to be called, I believe, Ultra Cruise. And that's going to have like millions of miles of roads mapped. And that'll be door to door, I believe. So a lot more robust than what Super Cruise is, which is select, mapped, divided highways. Really impressed to see how this technology continues to advance. Something I don't think I've mentioned is the fact that Super Cruise also uses the vibrating driver's seat to alert you of things. Like when Super Cruise is disengaging, you get the message on the screen, you get the steering wheel light turning red, but also the seat will vibrate. The seat normally vibrates for, I think, like blind spot warning and when you're backing up and the sensors detect you're getting close to something. It's a really cool uh, feedback thing that is not only visual, but also you feel it in your butt because the seat vibrates itself. And I think if you're really not paying attention, let's just say you pass out or something, or there's a medical emergency, Super Cruise can detect that too. It'll like alert, 
warn, warn, slow down, signal over, and I think you can come to a full stop and then call emergency services. I'm, I'm sure, I think that's what uh, Chad from the GMC team was telling me when we were on the Hummer drive, which is all really, really impressive implementation of this kind of technology to not only make your life more convenient and less stressful while driving, but safer, which is, that's a win-win. I'm actually a bit surprised that this road here is Super Cruise supported. I guess it is a divided highway. It's a divided road, just two lanes in either direction. But it's not like a major freeway and the little icon did show up. So I set up Super Cruise and it's been handling it fine. If we don't have the icon showing Super Cruise and you try to activate it, you'll get this warning message. Super Cruise unavailable, no road information. Some final thoughts on living with Super Cruise on a day-to-day -day basis. Now that I've gotten used to it on mapped roads that are supported, I've grown to really trust Super Cruise, where I'm not, I'm paying attention. You have to pay attention, but I'm not like hovering my hand over the wheel. I'm not hovering my foot over the brake pedal. I've really grown to trust it on a supported road. It does a very, very good job of staying in your lane, automatically passing, maintaining speed, distance, all of that. And the warning messages when you're no longer on a map road or you want to intervene are very clear. It tells you, uh, oh, this, this road is not going to be supported anymore. Make sure driver intervention, you take over. Super Cruise is disengaging. The light flashes red and so forth. So I've really grown accustomed to relying on Super Cruise on a freeway that's supported. I will use it the entire time. I also remember when these systems, see right now, Super Cruise disengaging, we're approaching a red light, so I need to take over, and I am fully in charge now. Uh, the steering wheel, like display icon light, is no longer on. I remember early on when these driver assistance, lane keep assist systems first started coming out, and I always described it as feeling like a ping pong ball bouncing between the lane markers, because you kind of get close to one side and go, oh wait, I just sensed the lane. Uh, the marker, the lane line, let me kind of correct back, turn you in. And then you go back to the other side and bounce back and forth. Some of the early systems didn't look far enough in advance. So if you approach a slower moving car or maybe a car that stopped, it would wait till almost like the last second and oh wait, it just picked it up on radar range and slam on the brakes, even if you had it set to maximum distance. Now this is not full self-driving yet like what uh, Tesla calls their system. GM is working on something called Ultra Cruise, which I, I believe is called Ultra Cruise. It's a step up. It's like two million miles of roads mapped or something like that. They released a press release. There's not many details on it, but it's supposed to be like door to door. You can also use Super Cruise of towing right now. It is available. It's not that expensive an option either. I think it's $2,500 on the window sticker here. Now, is it a subscription service? That I don't remember. Oh, Super Cruise is available again. Have the icon, turn it back on. Uh, we'll let the car handle it, the, uh, the Cadillac. Um, and the cool thing is GM will continue to add this across the platform. It's available in the Escalade and Hummer EV, which both of these are $100,000 vehicles, but I believe it's also available on the Bolt, and I have a Bolt coming, um, which I think should have Super Cruise. So we'll keep, they'll keep adding it to more and more platforms. If you're thinking about trying out Super Cruise, I say go for it. I mean, in terms of cost, $2,500 on a $100,000 Escalade Platinum is fairly negligible. It's like a rounding error pretty much, and it is really good. I need to try out Blue Cruise, I need to try out Tesla, uh, their system, but, Super Cruise on the road is great, is great. And obviously, the Escalade's also just fantastic. I love these things. They're so comfortable, so smooth. The AKG sound system's amazing. Auto lane change, looking for an opening, thank you. Uh, the OLED screens, the curved OLED screens are so immersive, they're such a showstopper. People see them, they're like, whoa. Sound system's great, got massage seats going right now. At night, the ambient lighting's really cool, and What's gonna make this even better? A supercharged V8. We're gonna go drive the Escalade V in a couple weeks, so that's gonna be even more fun. And with that, we'll conclude this video, spending another week living with the brand new Cadillac Escalade with the focus on seeing what Super Cruise is like. Hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. Thanks for watching.